Hi everyone and welcome to the Pivos iOS DS XBMC impression video. Um, I just wanted to kind of take a look at this little box that came out recently. Um, it's released by the Pivos company and uh, it's a little tiny device that runs um, Android. I think nowadays it actually runs 4.1 which is uh, ice cream sandwich. And I wanted to go over a little bit about what this box is all about, um, what you can do with it and how it runs. This is the box that it comes in. It's not very big. Um, once you get it out of the box it's about the size of a small hockey puck. Um, it uses an ARM Cortex A9 processor with 512 gigs, uh, megs of RAM, not gigs of RAM, has a 10100 Ethernet, um, uses BGN wireless, um, has HDMI, two USB ports for you to, able to be able to plug a keyboard in. It comes with a small remote, and um, like I said, it has an HDMI port that you can use to hook it up to your TV uh, pretty easily, actually. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how long it actually takes for this thing to boot. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like leaving their media center stuff on. Um, it's hooked up to my smaller TV in my bedroom here because uh, I don't really have a big a lot of room where my um, living room TV is. But uh, I just turned it on um, probably about 10 seconds ago or so. You can kind of see on the screen that it's doing a bunch of stuff. Um, you can also see the lights come on in the bottom right hand corner which is where the box is. Um, it unfortunately takes quite a while to load. This is the Pivo splash screen that it goes to. Um, once it goes from there, it'll show you another one where it says this is the Zios DS. Um, it sits there for a little while, and then finally it launches into um, the Android uh, desktop, I guess if you want to call it that. Um, it's a little bit clunky to use because you're going to be getting a remote that is um, not obviously meant for a touchscreen, which uh, ICS, um, which is Ice Cream Sandwich that it's running, is uh, kind of more useful on a touchscreen device. So it's a little weird um, navigating through there with a the remote control. Um, as you can see, it's it's not frozen here. I'm still sitting there looking at it. It's, it's actually taking quite a while to boot. Um, here you go. It's going to go to the next screen here in just a second. And after this is when the desktop pops up. So once you kind of sit through it for a little bit, it takes about two minutes to load. Um, you'll be presented with the uh, Android desktop. And then from there, you can launch into XBMC, which is kind of what you know this box is really all about, being able to let you watch movies and stuff like that. So um, just uh, you know, keep watching. It'll go to the desktop here in just a minute, and then from there, I'll launch into XBMC uh, shortly thereafter, and you can kind of take a look and see what's going on. So here you go. It finally uh, got to the Android desktop, and um, this is a pretty standard. Uh, ICS desktop. Uh, from here you can go to the upper right hand corner which is where the app drawer is or you can go to the top left where it says Google and it'll let you search. Um, I'm just going to go to the search menu and pick XBMC as an option here and then from there um, XBMC loads with the same splash screen that it would if you were using it on your desktop like at Windows or if we were using um, XBMC Ubuntu which is what I have on that Revo that the little Zios box is sitting on right now. And there you go. It's uh, just loaded and finally able to watch videos here. So now that we're actually in XBMC, um, we kind of want to see how it works, right? So what I did is um, I have a network attached storage device that I have a couple movies on. Um, I really don't have that much stuff, um, but I added them here. So I'm going to go to my uh, movie section, and you can see it kind of popping up up there. And this is already after I scraped the library, so I I'd skipped the part where I show you how it scrapes the library. And you can kind of see that it's already a little bit sluggish when it goes to load the fan art. Um, this is with the default skin that it comes with, which is Confluence. Um, I didn't even try any of the more fancy skins yet. Um, which is, to me, undoubtedly, like one of the big um, nice things about XBMC is the fact that you can customize it so hard, uh, so you know, greatly. And um, so I'm gonna uh, play a couple movies here. I'm gonna start with this one, which is Easy A. Um, you can see it kind of loads pretty easily there. Um, it plays the content back really, really well. Um, it has no problem skipping. This is a 480p movie, I believe. It's not ultra high def, but um, it works really, really well. Um, the remote uh, works for the most part. Unfortunately, the remote doesn't have volume toggles. So you have to kind of, um, you know, either use your TV remote or uh, set it ahead of time using XBMC. Um, I'm gonna go pick one other movie, um, which is uh, Eden of the East. Here, I think that's a much higher quality movie. I think this is 1080p. Um, it also renders this one pretty fine. Um, the subtitles were okay on one of the other movies that I have that has subtitles. Um, it seemed like the subtitles were either going a little bit faster or like they were lagging a little bit behind. It didn't seem to be quite on par with what my Revo would be doing. But um, you can see it, it renders it just fine, and it doesn't have any lag really. Um, you can skip back and forth using the remote, and it really doesn't have any issues with, you know, rendering the content or, um, you know, keeping up with it. It is, however, like when you're in the menu is really where you notice it, that it just doesn't, 
it just doesn't perform as well as you know a, a higher quality processor, um, something that would have a little bit more horsepower under the hood, obviously. Um, but if you're just looking at you know going in there um, using Confluence and uh, you know maybe going with like the default settings, and you don't really care that much about how it performs in the menus, um, this box does pretty well. Um, I'll scroll through here in just a minute pretty quickly, and you can kind of see that it it takes it a little bit, like it kind of hangs there for a second before it actually catches up. But uh, it does the job for the most part, so it's not really that terrible. Um, but you definitely kind of get what you pay for, which uh, is you know kind of low performance for uh, quite little money. So one of my biggest uh, likes about XBMC is how customizable it is and how many different skins you can get. So I use Aeon Nox on my Acer Revo that I have, and I I kind of recommended it to a bunch of my friends who that wanted to use it. So here you can see me going into appearances. Um, I had already downloaded the skin before, so I'm going to go over to skins change it from Confluence to Aeon Nox, and you can kind of sort of get an idea of um, what actually happens with it. Um, you can kind of hear me clicking on the remote here, and it's just kind of sitting there. So it, it actually takes quite a while for the little device to change over from the normal skin Confluence to um, Aeon Nox. It does render it eventually. Um, we'll see here in just a minute. There it goes. Uh, no, I don't want to see the videos that show me what Aeon is all about. I've already used it, so I'm just going to go back to the main menu. You can kind of already tell it's it's sluggish a little bit moving through the menus. Um, it takes a little while to go back to the main menu as well, and then once it's there, um, it works it works okay at that point in time. You can kind of see it loading here. I'm gonna go back to the movie section, and I don't like the default view type. So what I was gonna do here is I went to change it to the big fan um, view type, and you can already tell again here it's, it's taking quite a while to load. Um, it hasn't hung up or anything. It's just still sitting there loading. So there it goes. Um, it's still in the regular list view, so um, I'm going to go over here and change it to Big Fan because that's the view type I like, the one that has um, the big poster of the fan art in the back, and then like the small movie poster on the bottom left. Um, and you can kind of sort of see it's already having a hard time scrolling through and like even just rendering the artwork again. So here I go up to um, the top setting, and that's where you can change the view type. change it to uh, Big Fan, which is the one that I really like. And you're going to see here in a second it's going to change the how it looks. Yep, that's what I usually have mine set to. And I'm going to go scroll through here, and as I'm scrolling, um, you can see the, the fan art is okay in this view. It actually loads it okay. And then I'm going to hold down the button on the remote, and as I do that and it starts scrolling, it just kind of crashes, and it brings me back to the uh, Android desktop, which was kind of fun. So. It's definitely not perfect, um, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, overall, like I said, it's it's kind of what you pay for. It's $150, I believe, is how much this box is. Um, but it's it's not bad. I just it's not really for me. So uh, kind of take a look at you know how it performs, see how you like it in the video. Um, you can kind of sort of tell. Um, I didn't show you the scraping. The scraping takes quite a while to um, once you do that, but it's it's pretty cool for um, being that small and for being really like a first generation device that just came out. Um, I think this thing has a lot of potential, so um, hopefully this will be a sign of things to come for you know us home theater enthusiasts, and uh, I think uh, it'll be pretty cool. So stay tuned. If you have any info, if you have any questions or anything, um, feel free to post on this video or on my Tumblr, and uh, I'll try to get back to you.